the Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. One of the great days in a man's life is the day he pays off his mortgage and owns his home free and clear. If you agree, then be sure to listen to the main commercial on this program. Our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society, has some interesting and important information about mortgages. You'll learn about the Equitable Assured Home Ownership Plan, a plan that's a real money saver and a home saver, too. Be sure to listen carefully. Tonight's FBI file, The Frustrated Mice. In the annual study which your FBI makes of the field of crime, this year's report verified one fact which has been true since the very first survey was started. That fact is that crimes are committed by criminals in line of business. More than 50% of the people arrested in the past year showed records of previous arrests. And a recent study of the prisoners in this country showed that once a person has been to prison, there is better than an even chance that he will again be arrested after his release. Not that regeneration is not possible. Many thousands of prisoners are released every year who go out and live a decent, law-abiding life after serving their time. But mostly they are people who committed their single crime because of circumstances. They did not commit their crimes for profit or as a business. The hard fact is that once a man has been convicted of having committed a crime for profit, he will probably go on being a criminal until the very end. Tonight's FBI file opens in a small apartment located in the downtown section of a large Midwestern city. Wally Franklin, the occupant of this flat, is just ushering in a woman visitor. So you caught on a chair, May. Okay. If you want a drink or something, help yourself. Thanks. Working on a little problem here. It's called a fifth at Belmont Park. I saw the Duke today. Yeah? How is he? I'm worried about him, Wally. Why? What's the matter? Staying all alone up in that cabin's beginning to get the guy. Honey, not the Duke. Look, hiding out in a place for four months all alone will show on the Duke or anybody else. Why? What's he doing? Well, about a month ago, when I came up with his food, he asked me to bring some rubber boots next time I came. What do you need with them? Said that he wanted to explore the streams around the cabin. What's wrong with that? Wally, in the old days, Duke Calvert would take a cab if he was going from here to your kitchen. So now he's a lamister. He's got nothing else to do. Two weeks ago, he asked me to bring up some lanterns. Said he wanted to explore an old abandoned mine near the cabin. What's the rap on that? Would you go down in a mine? Something was running down there, yeah. Look, honey, you still haven't proved your point. Just wait till you hear what he asked for last week. I brought him out today. What? White mice. Huh? Half a dozen of them. White mice? Yeah. Now do you think the joint's getting it? Yeah, that don't sound too good. Wally, we gotta get him out of there. Honey, the cops are still looking for him, remember? I don't care. Look, he asked me to bring you out tomorrow. Will you come? Sure. Between the two of us, maybe we can talk him into doing something normal again, like robbing banks. Is that you, May? Yeah. Just a minute. Good evening, May. Wally's with me. Well, hello there, Wally. Hiya, Duke. Come in, both of you. Go on, May. Yeah. (laughs) 
Wally, I welcome you to Dismal Villa. Yeah, it's a good name for it. Just hang your wraps on that hook on the wall. Uh, all right. What's that? What? A big box laid out on the table there. Ah, a very interesting project. Come along and take a look at it. The uh, idea was suggested to me from one of the science magazines you brought out, May. Yeah? I just finished it this morning. Duke, what is it? Well, I guess you'd call it a miniature labyrinth. What's that mouse doing in there? He's getting a lesson in frustration. He acts like he's crazy running around like that. He isn't yet, but he will be. Huh? You see, I put cheese in that center enclosure. I let him find it several times. Then I close the entrance. He'll keep looking for that entrance until his nerves break down completely. There, Wally, what did I tell you? Yeah. What did you tell him, May? That this place is getting you. You got to get out of here. My dear girl, this is what keeps me sane. Look, I'm serious, Duke. You got to get into action. I'm going to. When? Right now, tonight. That's why I had you bring Wally out here. Duke, you mean you got a touch lined up? Yes. What is it? Take a look at this newspaper. That girl's picture there on the front page. Oh, let me see it. Yeah. Queen of Spring Festival. Alice Marshall, daughter of prominent socialite, is chosen festival queen by local florist group. Well, so what? So, she's our action. $25,000 worth. How? That's what her parents will pay to get her back. You mean we snatch her? Yes. Oh, kidnapping's a tough rap, Duke. It's a quick touch. That's what I'm interested in. Getaway money. What's the setup? I work the whole thing out. Go make us some coffee, May, and I'll tell you all about it. Okay. Oh, wait. Huh? <laughs> Look at that mouse. See how he's acting? Didn't I tell you he'd go crazy? <laughs> Two days later, in the local FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is approaching his desk. A visitor greets him. Jim Taylor? Yes, that's right. I'm Detective Sergeant Grafton, attached to headquarters. Oh, hello there. Hi. I've just been in to see your agent in charge. He told me to talk to you. Oh, fine. Sit down, Sergeant. Thank you. Well, what can I do for you? We received a report last night about 9 o'clock from a man named Marshall. He's a prominent local banker. Yes. He told us that his daughter had disappeared early yesterday afternoon. She'd last been seen leaving her class at Westside High School. I see. We got a complete description of the girl and sent out an alarm. Nothing came in on her last night. But this morning, her parents contacted us. They'd received a note saying the girl was being held for $25,000 ransom. What? I gave the note to your agent in charge. He's forwarding it to your laboratory in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, Sergeant, was this note mailed to the parents? No, it was left in their mailbox. Have you been able to establish where the girl went after she left school? Well, we contacted one of her classmates this morning. Yes. You see, this Marshall girl had been chosen queen of the spring festival. And? Her classmates said a woman approached Alice Marshall near the school, said she was a photographer on a national magazine, and asked to take pictures of her. Mm -hmm. They drove away in the woman's car. And that's the last that was seen of her? Yes. Any description on this woman? None. Has any of this been given to the newspapers? No, the parents have requested that there be no publicity. That's good. Now, did the kidnapper suggest any means of contacting them? Yes. They asked that an ad be placed in the personal column of the Morning Star. I see. Well, Sergeant, I gather that the FBI will merely be observers in this case. That is, until it's established that they've crossed a state line with the girl, or until the ransom money is paid. Yes, but uh, <laughs> we would appreciate your unofficial help. And we'll be glad to give you that. Oh, well, tell me, have the parents consented to take that ad in the paper? Yes. Fine. Sergeant, all we can do now is wait for the kidnapper's next move. <laughs> I'm out here in the kitchen. Well, what are you doing? Establishing some improvements in my labyrinth. What for? We'll be out of here tomorrow night. Well, I enjoy it, May. It was too simple before, though. The mice broke down much too quickly. Where's Wally? Uh, he went into town. What for? Buy a paper to see if they ran that ad. Huh? Yes, he just called a few minutes ago. Did they run the ad? They did. Good. How's the girl? Oh, she's awake now. I just left her. I think I'd better go in and have a talk with her. What for? I've written a second note, the one telling her parents where to leave the money. I want her to sign it. Make some lunch, will you, May? Okay. Got a key to her room? Yes. <laughs> Good morning. 
I'm your host here, Miss Marshall. I hope you're comfortable. I want to go home. When can I leave here? Well, that more or less depends upon your parents. What do you mean? How promptly they pay for your release. <laughs> oh, now, now, that won't do any good. Keep away from me. Don't touch now, me. Now, stop cringing. Let me assure you right now that this is strictly a business proposition. Please get out of here. We have some business to take care of first. Oh, leave me alone. You're just as annoying to me as I am to you. I have a paper here that I want you to sign. Just put your signature on it, and I'll get out of here fast. Jim, are you busy? No, no. Come on in, Sergeant. Well, we've gotten results from the ad. Oh? The marshal's just received the second note. What did it say? It instructed them to put the $25,000 in a bag, all small bills. Mm -hmm. Then they're to put the bag in the trunk compartment of their daughter's car. Yes, go on. And they're to keep the trunk compartment unlocked, leave the car in a parking lot at the corner of 4th and Main Street at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Then they've obviously gotten a description of the car from the girl. Yes. Oh, incidentally... The girl signed the note herself, so we can assume that she's still alive. Oh, I certainly hope so. Oh, by the way, we just received a teletype from Washington on that first note. Oh? What's the story? There were no fingerprints on it other than the girl's parents. The handwriting didn't check with anything in the files. Hmm. Uh, more or less figured, I guess. They also sent a report on the ink. It was manufactured by Carlton Company in 1944. The paper was a cheap variety that sold in countless five-and-dime stores. <laughs> Doesn't give us much to go on. Yes, I know. Oh, tell me, Sergeant, have the girl's parents decided to pay the ransom money? Yes. Good. Now, look, please assure them that no action will be taken by any of us until their daughter is returned safely to her home. Is that you, Wally? Yeah. Just a minute. How did you make out? Okay. Did you get the note to them? Yeah. How about the newspapers? Did they have anything on the kidnapping? No, not a word. Oh, I guess they ain't gone to the cops, huh? Oh, of course they have. Evidently, they want it kept quiet. Oh. Well, what's our next move, Duke? We wait until tomorrow night. Then pick up the money. Do we all go in for it? No, that will be May's job. What's that? You're to collect the ransom money. Well, thanks. It'll be easier that way, May. Not if I'm picked up. They'll be too smart to do that. Don't forget, we warned them. If there was any hitch, they'd never see the girl again alive. Well, what do I do with the money when I get it? You call here, then come out and pick us up. What about the girl? What do you mean? When do you release her? We don't. Huh? Oh, that'd be a sucker play, my dear. You mean, when we blow, we take her with us? No, stupid. She stays here. Yeah, but then she could tip off the cops. She won't tip anyone off, Wally. She'll be dead. Tonight's case from the official FBI files will be reopened in just a moment. One of the most beautiful words in our language. A word that paints a picture of happiness and contentment, peace and security. And it is to guard that security, to protect that home, that the Equitable Life Assurance Society created its famous Assured Home Ownership Plan. What's that, Mr. Keating? It's an insured mortgage plan. You see, in the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan, you get these four advantages. First, if the owner dies, the Equitable Society cancels the mortgage. It's paid off in full. What's more, every dollar previously paid on principal is returned to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. Second, during the owner's lifetime, a special cash fund is built up in this plan, ready for use if sickness or unemployment threaten home security. You mean if I get hard up or lose my job, this cash fund takes care of the mortgage payments for me? Yes. For instance... At the end of five years, the cash fund would be sufficient to carry your mortgage installments for nearly a whole year. You see, as your mortgage shrinks, the cash fund increases. You can use it to pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in approximately 14 years. Finally, mortgage interest is only 4%, and there is a liberal allowance to help cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. All in all, a man is mighty lucky if his health, age, income, and the location of his home 
qualify him for an equitable, assured home ownership plan. Well, how can I find out if I qualify, Mr. Keating? Ask your Equitable Society representative. Get full information on the plan that protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. Look in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Frustrated Mice. As is proven by tonight's case in the files of your FBI, one crime leads to another in a criminal's career. And no crime is too brutal if it serves its purpose. Here, it is the plan to compound kidnapping with murder, with the willful taking of a human life. That callous disregard for other human beings, that sudden decision to murder this one and spare that one, is all a part of the criminal's ego. He feels power because he can decide on whether someone shall live or die. And his pitiful inferiority feeds on that power. Whether his name is Hitler, Mussolini, or the criminal in tonight's case, Duke Calvert, he never realizes that there is a consistent record behind every such quest for power. And the record shows that in every case, lust has proven self-destructive. Tonight's file continues at the kidnapper's cabin. 24 hours have elapsed. Duke Calvert and his confederate are seated at the living room table. <laughs> Wally, look at this. Huh? Just watch that mouse. He's completely frustrated. Duke, if you don't mind, I'll just read this magazine. Huh? Oh, does this bother you? Yeah. Why? I just can't help betting on the mouse. <laughs> look at that little devil. <laughs> I wonder how she's making out. Uh, oh, May? Yeah. She should have collected that dough by now. Oh, nothing can go wrong. I hope you're right. Relax, Wally, relax. Hey. I'll get it. Think that's May? I imagine so. Hello? Duke? Oh, yes, May. I got the dough. Any trouble? None that I know of. Where are you now? In a lunch wagon just outside of town. Get out here as fast as you can. Right. How'd it go, Duke? Fine. Where is she? On her way out here. Oh, good. Now, Wally... I think it's time we took care of the girl. Duke, you're really going to kill her? Of course. Where's your key? Oh, I have it right... Wait a minute. What? Oh, it was in his pocket. Yeah, wait a second. Maybe it's over... No. Have you lost it? Oh, I got it here someplace. Never mind. There's an extra one on the shelf. I couldn't have lost the whole ring of keys. This will let us in. Wait. Huh? That other door, the back door, it's open. The girl's gone. Gone? Yes. How could you get out that door? There's your answer. What? Your bunch of keys. They're in that lock. She got them and opened it. Yeah, I don't get it. Look, how could she get out the... When did you see her last? I... I don't know. Think. About an hour ago? There's no telling how far she's gotten, you stupid fool. Look, Duke, I, I couldn't help it. Duke, everybody makes mistakes. But you're not making any more. <laughs> Jim, a girl's in this room. Motorist brought her here to headquarters about 20 minutes ago. Good. Go ahead, Jim. Thanks. Miss Marshall? Yes? This is Mr. Taylor. He's a special agent of the FBI. Hello. Hello, Miss Marshall. Do you feel well enough to tell us your story now? Yes. Fine. I, I was being held in the cabin. There were three of them, two men and a woman. I, I was kept locked in a room all the time I was there. Cabin was across the state line, Jim. I see. Go ahead, Miss Marshall. Well, tonight, one of the men came in my room and forgot his keys. When he left, I used one of the keys to open the back door. Mm -hmm. I ran out, kept running until I came to a highway. And that's when the motorist picked you up? Yes. Where are my father and mother? They've been notified that you're here. They're on their way over. Oh, thank heaven. Miss Marshall, can you give us a description of these three people? Well, yes, I'm sure I can. And how about the cabin? Do you think you could lead us to it? Yes, I believe I could. Good girl. Sergeant, let's get a description of the people, send out an alarm, and then we'll try and find that cabin. That you, May? Yeah? Just 
stays right in the car. What's the matter? Turn around quick. Look, what's wrong? Do as I say. Okay. Now, what is it? What's happened? The girl got away. What? How? Our dear friend Wally left his keys in her room. Oh, brother, when was this? Oh, a couple of hours ago, I that guess. Sure. Where is he now? Back in the cabin. You left him there? I wasn't interested in bringing a corpse. He's dead. Yes, my dear, he's very dead. That's kind of rough, Duke. I refuse to put up with stupidity. I see what you mean. Where do we go now? Just keep heading down the hill. Then what? When you hit the highway, head south. Well, don't you think the cop... Wait a minute. Huh? Down to the bottom of the hill. Two sets of headlights, two cars coming up. Yeah. Stop the car. Why? No one but cops would be coming up this private road. The girls evidently led them here. Now, where's the money? Well, the bag's right there on the floor. Is there a flashlight in the car? A glove compartment. Get it. Okay. I'll take the money. All right, come on. Where are we going? Up this hill. You can't go that way. That's sheer cliff. Just follow me. The cops are bound to come along May, and... listen. Do you remember that abandoned mine I told you about? You brought me the lantern so I could explore it? Yeah. One of the passageways in that mine cuts right through the hill. It opens onto a lake. We can pick up a boat there. Oh, I get it. All right, then. Hurry. <laughs> Sergeant, slow the car down. There's another car up ahead. Yeah, I see it. Oh, the cabin's right up there. Oh, good. The car's blocking the road. We'll have to stop. Miss Marshall, get on the floor, please. We may have some trouble. Oh, surely. Huh. I don't see anyone in that car. Come on, let's have a look. I'll tell the boys in the car behind to cover us. All right. Cover us, boys. Okay. I got my flashlight. Come on, Sergeant. Yeah, certainly looks empty. Yes, the door is open. Uh -huh. There's no one in it. The gym. Yes? The motor's still warm. And this must be the kidnapper's car. They were probably making a getaway when they saw our headlights. All right. Sergeant, look here. What? Footprints. A man and a woman's, and they lead up the hill. Yeah. Sergeant, tell your men to take Miss Marshall with them up to the cabin. I think we'd better follow these footprints. Yes, what is it? Hold that flashlight still. I can't see where I'm walking. Very well. You sure you know where you're going? Of course. I've explored this place a dozen times. How can you tell which passage is the right one? We've gone past at least a dozen of them. Are you trying to confuse me? Of course not. Well, then please be quiet. Oh, wait. What? Huh? You've come to a dead end. Huh? I've sworn this was the right way out. You mean we're lost? I don't think so. You said you knew the way. Well, let's go back. It, it must be the last turn. But you're not sure. Let's go back, I said. Come on. Jim. Yes, Sergeant? I think I have an idea where these footprints are going to lead us. Really? I'll know for sure as soon as we get up this little hill. Oh, good. Yeah, just as I thought. What? Flash your light over there. Okay. Well, it looks like the entrance to a mine. It's just what it is. It was abandoned many years ago. I used to play up here when I was a kid. Look, those footprints lead right into it. Yeah. Taking quite a chance going in there. It's quite a labyrinth. Sergeant, do you remember it well enough for us to follow them? Yeah. I think I do. Good, then let's go. Well, where is it? What? The passage, the one you missed. It, it should be right here. Right around this corner. Oh! Oh, what is it? Big rat ran right ahead of us. Oh, please stop being so jumpy. Come on. Okay. Wait a minute. What now? There are four different ways to go here. I don't know which one to take. Look, I thought you said we'll, you... We'll, we'll follow this one on the left. Come on. What do you want? What do you don't want? Don't go so fast, please. You want us to get out of here, don't you? Yeah. Well, then we've got to move. Keep moving. Do you hear me? I hear you. 
Oh. Don't you hurt? Oh, my... My ankle. Oh, where's the flashlight? I... I dropped it. Oh. Oh, it's right... Right here someplace. Yeah? Let me look for it, man. Yeah? You hear me? I can't see. Have you any matches? No. Oh, now we're really in a fix. Can't even see. We're lost in this darkness. Don't stop it. Oh, we've got to get out of here. Can't even find the place we came in. Look, you're acting like one of those mice in that, that labyrinth. Yes. That's what we are, May. We are those mice. Duke. We're trapped just like they were. All right, down there. Stay where you are. Who is that? Got to get out of here. Duke. Duke. Either one of you. Come, they come. I've got to get out of here. Duke, Duke, stay with me. Duke, what do we do? Take the girl, Sergeant. Right. I'll bring this man along with me. Duke Calvert was sentenced to life imprisonment for kidnapping, and then turned over to state authorities for prosecution for the murder of his confederate. His girlfriend, May, was sent to prison for life for her part in the kidnapping. In tonight's case from the files of your FBI, you have another example of how weak even a strong criminal is, of how little chance there is for anyone to succeed in a life of crime. Because his plans went wrong at one point, the entire structure also fell. But even if everything had gone the way he planned, he would not have escaped. For your FBI does not allow kidnapping cases to remain unsolved. That is part of their credo. And what is even more important, that is also part of their record. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. I've been doing some thinking, Mr. Keating, and I've decided to see if I qualify for one of those assured home ownership plans. Let's hope you do, Henry, because look what you get in one package from the Equitable Society. A mortgage that's paid in full if the owner dies. If not, a cash fund to be used in financial emergencies. And mortgage interest at only 4%. No wonder it's called America's finest plan for home ownership. So don't delay. See your equitable representative soon. Or write to the Equitable Society, care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Fugitive Traveler. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI as a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Fugitive Traveler on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.